Greetings, metaphysicians. This is episode 156, Incorruptible. And we are talking about the potentially unique corruptibility of the human species in this episode. And why is that? And can animals be corrupted? Can angels be corrupted? We ponder all of these things. I hope that you enjoy the episode. You are listening to Let's Get Metaphysical. This podcast explores the spiritual and metaphysical world through the experiences and opinions of the host and those interviewed. It should not necessarily be seen as direct endorsement or personal advice to our listeners. We encourage you to use your own discernment, judgment, and intuition regarding anything you learn from this show. Let's get metaphysical. Welcome to the Let's Get Metaphysical podcast. I'm your host, Renata Maniachi, here to remind you that you are a spiritual being having a temporary human experience here on lovely planet Earth. Make the most of it. This is season seven, Heaven on Earth, and this is episode 156, Incorruptible. Let's jump right in. Are you ready? Let's get meta. Masters and angels, I request your presence, guidance, and support through this episode. Please help these words to be useful to all listeners on their evolutionary journey. Let me know the truth, speak the truth, become the truth, and be the truth. And please let this episode reach whoever needs to hear it. Thank you with gratitude and full faith. Bless creation. I talk a lot about the truth on this show. And it seems like a fairly simple thing. It's it's not a difficult concept. It's not complicated. It's not rocket science. It's not quantum physics or calculus or any of these things that seem hard or that we're told are hard or that maybe are difficult. Truth is pretty simple. It exists and then what is not that is untruth. And so it seems Like it should be a fairly straightforward path for people to walk, to walk in truth, to live truth. Whatever is true for them to be that, to own that, to share that when they need to, or just embody that when they don't need to share that. And anything that's not true, well, why is there so much of that on this planet? The topic that dropped in today is incorruptible. But to talk about that ideal, because that is an ideal, being incorruptible, that's what I want to aspire to be. But unfortunately, it seems like the human condition is one of corruptibility. I wonder if any other being, any other species, any other race of animal on this planet has an issue with corruptibility the way that we do. I can't think of any species or other types of animal or anything off the top of my head that can be corrupted the way that humans can be corrupted. Now, I'm sure maybe there's, 
you know, Animal Planet magazine articles from whenever that could prove me wrong, saying that this species of vape, you know, these bonobos kind of, you know, gave this leader bonobo, paid him off in bananas, and then, you know, things went well for the people who paid him off for the rest, for the apes who paid him off in the last, you know, the rest of the year, whatever. I don't know. But I don't think that we see widespread corruption in any other species on this planet. And maybe that's because humans have this maybe unique ability to, I don't even know if it's an ability, but this sense of morality, of right and wrong, of truth and untruth, positive and negative. We have this, maybe it's only our brains that, or our, maybe not our brains, maybe our evolution, maybe where we've reached in consciousness that we can hold, we can even become corrupted. We can even become morally misaligned. Maybe this is a uniquely human thing on this planet. But the idea is, as long as we have history, as far back as we have history, it is fraught with humans, many times we hear about the humans in power at the time being corrupted. And what does that mean? It means becoming susceptible to veering out of alignment if they were in alignment to begin with. And what I mean by alignment is being in truth, moving forward for good, moving forward for progress, moving forward for not just yourself, but for a community, a group, uplifting yourself and those around you. These ideals that the highest levels of society maybe aspire to, not that we've always been able to embody that or live that, and maybe very few Maybe we really haven't gotten as far as maybe we should have by now or think that we have. And you always, it's, it's always, at least from the United States when we're growing up, we always learn about other countries where the leaders are corrupt, right? It's always these other countries in Africa or Asia, but not us, you know, we, we don't have corrupt leaders, and I think we do talk about corruption in terms of leaders because we don't really, it doesn't really necessarily affect us as individuals if it's, you know, maybe this person on the other side of town who's corrupt and, you know, charging people, you know, not fair amounts for their car mechanic services or whatever. But we hear about this a lot when we have people in power and people who control rules and laws and ways of being for countries because that affects more people. This is when you hear about corruption is when people are in positions of power because it affects more people. It's just natural. I sometimes wonder how, what percentage of people that are in power in this country, in any country, are corrupted. And what do I mean by that? I guess I mean have been bought off or are not aligned with truth and goodness for themselves and the people around them who have been swayed by something, whether it's money or power or favors or some kind of fame or greed or some kind of control over decisions, over other humans, over rules and regulations, over whatever, control. Being corrupted, being corruptible. 
I feel like it's a much higher number than we would care to believe, than most people would care to know about. Of course, I can't prove that. I'm not here to prove it. But there's a clear discordance, a disharmony, a misalignment, not just in this country, in the United States, in the world. And how much of that has to do with corrupt people, corrupt humans, humans who have been corrupted either just out of being swayed out of alignment, being coaxed out of alignment by the things that I mentioned, some form of greed, power, control, money, whatever, or maybe don't want to go out of alignment, would not be so easily swayed out of alignment, but something in their lives has been discovered that can be used as blackmail to force these people out of alignment, which is another form of being corrupted, right? Say you are for the people, say you are for yourself and uplifting everyone and being honest and true and transparent and making better decisions for all humans, et cetera, et cetera. Because as I said in the beginning, this is not complex. Truth is not complex. Doing the right thing, I suppose can be complex, complex, but truth isn't. It just, it is where it, you're either telling the truth or you're not, right? And I think it's fair to say that those who are corrupted are not telling the truth 100% of the time. So whether someone is swayed by exterior things to make themselves and their lives better, or whether they've chosen, they, they've become compromised in some way, some past deed or affair or something that can be held against them that they're too scared to let out into the open, or even the threat of a story that's completely false being put out there. That person chooses to go out of alignment backdoor deals, gets more money, votes this way to appease this organization or this corporation or these people that we don't even know who is doing the swaying, whatever. The idea here is that it seems as though humans are in a fairly unique position to be corrupted as beings on this planet. It doesn't seem as though this is an issue for other types of animals, other types of living things on this planet. And I'll get an email from someone saying, well, we got an article about this species of ape or monkey or whatever, and that's fine. But why is that? Why is it so difficult for our leaders, for the individual at the head of a family, for any member in any community, any congregants of a spiritual organization, whatever, any job, any spiritual or religious following, any government appointment, any contribution to society, teachers, medical professionals, lawyers, any, everything. Why is it so easy for humans to be corrupted, especially at the top levels? You know, I feel like it's, there's probably less of a percentage of corruptibility in the familial community levels and more as you gain more and more power and fame and recognition and control and money etc right that just kind of 
make sense. Not that there isn't on the, you know, more mundane levels of society, but it seems that as you grow in stature, you grow in recognition, etc. Whoever is pulling the strings, whoever is corrupting people, it becomes more prevalent because it matters more if people want to have control over you. So why are we so easily corruptible? I feel that we all innately have a sense of right and wrong. I feel like that's innate for every human, almost every human. Maybe there's some beings that are just born with complete no moral compass. I don't know. Maybe not. High majority. I don't know. Why are we so easily swayed from the truth, from living that, from being that, from speaking that, from knowing that, from pushing that forward, from embodying truth and goodness and uplifting all of humanity? And can we snap out of that? Is there anything that we can come together as a, a human race? Is there anything that we can do to come together and decide not to be corrupted? To become incorruptible. I try to sit here and think of what my country would look like if all the people running it were incorruptible. I, I really don't know what it would look like. I can try to imagine all of these wonderful things. And for some reason, just today, this show, I've just landed on this word, incorruptible. If you couldn't be moved from the truth, if you couldn't be moved from what is morally right and correct, if you couldn't be swayed by power, by money, by greed, by fame, by not wanting your reputation tarnished by a lie, by wanting to protect your family, if the truth was the most important thing to you, not favors and backdoor deals and whatever is happening around us to create this society that we're currently trying to survive, frankly. What does being incorruptible look like? I'm talking about this because this is what I want to see. It's what I want to see in the world. And I think just naturally, I think naturally, if you're listening to this, you must know at least one person in your life, I hope, hopefully many, that are incorruptible, who are incorruptible, who have integrity and wouldn't change the truth of a situation no matter how much they were offered to change it, no matter what promises were made to make them famous or to give them more control or power. Why <laughs> is it so difficult for humans to be incorruptible. What is it about us? And it makes me think, you know, I mentioned the animals, the other beings on the planet. I don't think that they have this issue. I just don't even, I don't, maybe they can't even have this issue because of their makeup. And then it makes me think, you know, we have, you know, we think we're the apex uh, species on this planet. Maybe we are, maybe we're not. Maybe we are in the physical, but maybe there's non-physical beings or other dimensional beings that are actually far superior to us. And then, you know, we talk about higher level beings on this show all the time. Angels, archangels, any, whatever the hierarchy in consciousness that brings, you know, whatever is closer to God or closer to the creator, or closer to the maker, closer to source, higher power, whatever you want to call it, than we are currently, right? Let's just say that 
the maker is at the top of the chart and for all intents and purposes, the human is at the bottom of the chart. Who's in the middle? Well, we, let's just say angels, for lack of sake of argument, let's say the top of the chart is the maker, higher power, whatever your word is for that. The bottom is hum humans. The middle is angels. Okay. We know humans are corruptible. We know that we're prone to greed and money, power, control, whatever, and that we can be bought, we can be swayed, we can be threatened, we can be, we can, we can jump off of our alignment and our moral compass and our truth because of a myriad of different things. Okay. And for the sake of argument, we'll say that the maker can't do that or doesn't do that or wouldn't do that, but we'll just say that they're not even built like that. Whatever this higher power is that created this whole creation is not that. Are angels corruptible? The thing between, the thing that we're stating between humans and the source? I don't know. Like the closer we get to the maker, do we become more like the maker on the level of consciousness, on the level of evolution? If this is a evolutionary path, if this is you know, if we're, if this is a ladder, this is probably not the best analogy, but maybe it, maybe it works. If we're at the bottom rung of the ladder in terms of corruptibility and the source is at the top, like, can we climb those rungs? Can, if we're human, if we're in these bodies, is there a version of us in these bodies that is less corruptible, but not yet an angel? not yet a lower level angel, not yet a cherub, if you will? Are there other versions of us on other planets that this is not a problem? They have evolved out of being blackmailed. They've evolved out of being swayed by material things like money, power, and control. Have other beings, have other humanoid beings on other planets evolved further than being swayed from truth and they can run their planet, their countries, their whatever in truth and transparency. No backdoor deals, no blackmailing, no trying to get more control over other beings, no trying to tell other beings how they need to live and what they can say and what they can't say and what they need to stick into their bodies right when they're born to keep them quote unquote healthy. There's all these things, right? I clearly have opinions about this stuff, but like what what is it that makes us want this control over others? at the risk of remaining in truth, at the risk of, you know, being brought out of the light. Like, why, why do we sell ourselves so short? Is that, is this a disease of this planet? Like, are we all here together because we just haven't graduated to the class that's beyond this, that's beyond corruptibility, that's beyond, you know, not even thinking about, oh, you know, if you give me this much money, sure, I'll say what you want me to say or I'll vote how you want me to vote or whatever it is. When do we get beyond that? What do we have to do? What do we have to do as a humanity, as a species, as beings that are ensouled, that have souls? We are ensouled. There are souls in our bodies that are eternal. The bodies are not eternal, but the soul is. When do we get to the point where we decide that we will be incorruptible? I think I'm talking about this just because I want it so much. How would the world be if we just followed the moral compass, 
that we all have, that we all contain because it is written in our blueprint. It's written in our very being and our souls that split from the source, however, billions of years ago. Is this part of this evolutionary <laughs> journey? This must be because it is. It is happening. And and why? And, and those souls, you know what? I don't want to leave out the people who are incorruptible because there are. There are those people, and maybe there's more of those people than we give credit for, but those people are busy taking care of their families and not being in, put into leadership positions because they are incorruptible, right? Maybe there's, so, there, maybe there's so many human souls on this planet that are truly incorruptible, and what makes them different? Why are they like that? Why can't they be swayed by money and power and greed, and why can't they be bought, and why can't they be blackmailed? Where are those people? Why aren't those people in power. And if they are in power, God bless. I'm calling in a time of incorruptibility. I'm calling in a time of truth. I hope we all are. Calling in a time of transparency, of wanting the very best for yourself and for those around you, of wanting to have the freedoms that we all can enjoy without pain to others or less for others or negativity for others. I'm too much of an idealist to be on this planet <laughs> sometimes. Sometimes. I'll make a request here for it. And if you want to make similar requests, please do, because it actually helps. Masters and angels, I humbly request that you bring in this time of incorruptibility for the human race. Usher in this moment where every human feels deep within themselves that they want to embody the truth and to amplify that all around them to everyone around Thank you with gratitude and full faith. We can make these requests. We can strive to be better. We can imagine a world where the moral compass of everyone is aligned with truth and goodness. We can see that. I am an optimist. I remain an optimist. I think good things are happening. I think more good things are coming, not without uncomfortable things, probably not without painful things, whatever, whatever. That's the world we live in. That is what we get in this planet at this time. But we can ask for these things to happen in the world. And I think that we should. I think it's our obligation to envision, speak, draw, demand, <laughs> in some cases, to have the world that we want. And we can start doing that right now. So join me and make a request to your higher power, your team, for a change that you want to see in the world that would benefit everyone around you. I'll leave it there for today. As always, thank you so much for listening. Stay positive, stay safe, and stay meta. The Let's Get Metaphysical podcast is an Up, Up, and Awaken production and is produced and hosted by Renata Maniachi. Our intention is to raise the vibration of the planet by sharing, validating, and normalizing spiritual and metaphysical experiences. The Let's Get Meta podcast is inspired by angels and supported by angels. If you would like to be an angel donor to the podcast, visit patreon.com slash let's get meta. Thank you for listening. Stay meta. Let's get Metaphysical, let's get meta. Metaphysical, let's get meta. Metaphysical, let's get meta. Metaphysical.